Hello and welcome to Math Zone African Motives. Today, we're diving into a fundamental proof in calculus. Our goal in this video is to prove that the derivative of the sine function is the cosine function. In other words, if you have a function y equals sine x, its derivative di by dx is equal to cosine x. We'll explore two different methods for this proof. The first one uses a sum to product trigonometric identity, and the second uses a compound angle identity. Both methods will lead us to the same elegant result, but they provide different perspectives on how to arrive there. Let's get started. We'll begin with the first method. The question asks us to prove that if y equals sine x, then its derivative is cosine x. Here is the question we will be solving. Our first task is to apply the definition of the derivative. The derivative is defined as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. This is the first principle's definition. In our case, our function f of x is sine x, so we substitute sine x into our formula. This gives us the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine x all over h. Now we need to simplify the expression sine of x plus h minus sine x. We can't directly substitute h equals 0 because it would give us 0 over 0, which is undefined. To simplify, we'll use a sum to product trigonometric identity. The identity we need is sine of a minus sine of b equals 2 times cosine of a plus b over 2 times sine of a minus b over 2. Let me highlight this crucial formula in blue. In our expression, a corresponds to x plus h and b corresponds to x. So we let a be x plus h and b be x. We can then substitute these into our identity. Let's simplify the terms inside the cosines and sines. First, the term x plus h plus x over 2 simplifies to 2x plus h over 2, which is x plus h over 2. Second, the term x plus h minus x over 2 simplifies to just h over 2. Substituting these simplified terms back into our identity gives us sine of x plus h minus sine x equals 2 cosine of x plus h over 2 times sine of h over 2. Now we can substitute this simplified expression back into our limit definition. Our derivative becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times cosine of x plus h over 2 times sine of h over 2, all divided by h. We can rearrange this term to make use of a famous trigonometric limit. We can split the expression into a product of two limits. This gives us the limit of cosine of x plus h over 2 times the limit of sine of h over 2 over h over 2. Notice I've split the 2 and the h from the denominator to create the h over 2 term we need. We've created a form that contains a well-known limit. This limit is one of the most important in calculus. The limit as theta approaches 0 of sine of theta over theta is equal to 1. This can be proven geometrically or using Le Hopital's rule. In our second term, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of h over 2 over h over 2. Let's let theta equal h over 2. As h approaches 0, theta also approaches 0. So, this limit becomes the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta, which is 1. I'll highlight this in green to show it evaluates to a 1. Now let's evaluate the first part of our expression. This gives us cosine x. Now we combine our results. And with that, we have successfully proven that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. This proof is now complete. Now let's explore the second method, which uses a compound angle identity. This is a very common alternative proof. Once again, we start with the first principle's definition of the derivative for y equals sine x. This step is identical to the first method. The difference starts here. Instead of the sum to product identity, we will expand sine of x plus h. We use the compound angle identity, sine of a plus b equals sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. Applying this to our expression, with a being x and b being h, we get sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h. 
So our derivative expression becomes the limit of sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h minus sine x, all divided by h. Now we need to regroup the terms to reveal some familiar limits. A key strategy here is to look for terms that contain sine ha or cosine h minus 1. We can factor out a common term. Let's group the sine x terms together. This gives us sine x times the quantity cosine h minus 1 plus cosine x sine h, all divided by h. Now we can split this into two separate limits. This separation is valid because the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, provided they both exist. We now have two distinct limits to evaluate. Let's work with the first limit. Notice that sine x is a constant with respect to the variable h. This means we can pull it outside the limit. The value of this limit, the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h, is 0. So, our first term simplifies to sine x times 0, which is just 0. I'll show that in green. Now let's evaluate the second limit. The setup is very similar. Here, cosine x is our constant with respect to h, so we can pull it outside the limit as well. This gives us cosine x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h. This is the same standard limit we saw in the first proof. As we know, the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h is 1. Therefore, our second term simplifies to cosine x times 1, which is just cosine x. This result is highlighted in green. We've now evaluated both limits. All that's left is to put the pieces back together. The derivative, di by dx, is the sum of our two results. The first part was 0, and the second part was cosine x. Adding them together gives us our final answer, cosine x. So, both methods have confirmed that the derivative of sine x is cosine x. This is a crucial result you'll use throughout your study of calculus. The fact that both distinct methods yield the identical result, cosine x, verifies our proof. We have confirmed the derivative of sine x using first principles. The key takeaways are the first principles definition, trigonometric identities, and the two standard limits, sin h over h and cosine h minus 1 over h. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials from Math Zone African Motives.